If you're doing VC methods, you really need to understand how to answer show that questions before your first sack. Now you might've come across show that questions before and you're unsure about how to exactly tackle them purely because there's no answers or no marks given to your final answer. It's all about the process. So whenever you see show that in a question, just think about the process. They wanna see the process that you take to get from the start to the final answer. Now in this case, what we have is f of x is equal to x cubed plus one quarter x. And it's asking us to show that f of x is strictly increasing over its maximal domain. So let's break down the question into its parts, show that f of x is strictly increasing. So we need to think about what strictly increasing means. And we have to think about the maximal domain as well for this function. Now I'm just gonna give it away. The maximal domain of this function is all real numbers purely because there's no restrictions in this expression here. Now, what we need to do is think about how to show a function is actually strictly increasing. And then what we do is we just work backwards from there to figure out how to actually show that for this specific function. So if you look at the textbook and go to this strictly increasing section, you'll see that the definition of strictly increasing is that f of b is greater than f of a when b is greater than a. So this should be the final line of working out. And that's actually what I start with whenever answering show that questions. I also end my show that questions with QED. It's just an acronym for a Latin expression that kind of just means I've shown what is needed to be shown. So f of b is greater than f of a when b is greater than a. Let's just take a look at this expression or this phrase and see what this actually means. So what it's saying is that when the x value is greater than a different x value, so when this value is bigger than another one, the y value is always bigger than that original y value corresponding to the x value. I don't know, that didn't really make sense. But whenever the x value is bigger, the y value is also bigger. The corresponding y value is also bigger. That's just a simple way of looking at it. So if you wanna look at this from an algebraic or a graphical perspective, what you need to do is say, okay, if this x value here is bigger than this one there, then the y value is always bigger as well. So this graph is always going to the right and going upwards as well. So that's just a graphical representation of what's going on. So now we need to show this algebraically. How do we actually show this algebraically? What we first need to do is just define a and b as specific values that correspond to the maximal domain. So what I'm gonna say is that I'm gonna let a and b be an element of all real numbers where b is greater than a. What I'm pretty much doing is just initializing the problem where I say that a and b are real numbers, but I'm also gonna specify that b is greater than a, and that's gonna be important when it comes to my working out as well. So again, what my goal is to do is to show that f of b is greater than f of a. And there's no better way than to do that than actually evaluating expressions for f of b and f of a in terms of b and a respectively. So what I'm gonna do is evaluate f of a, and this is pretty easy, you just replace x with a in this case. So I say a cubed plus one quarter a. And I'm gonna say the same thing for f of b. f of b is equal to b cubed plus one quarter b. But you might say to yourself, Adrian, what was the point of that? Because I've literally just replaced x with a and x with b. How does that actually help me with showing that f of b is greater than f of a? So what we need to do is actually compare the components of this expression and say, okay, how do we know if b cubed is greater than a cubed? And how do we also know that one quarter a is greater than one quarter b? What we need to do is just compare those different pairs. And you'll see that if you have a number cubed, that's always gonna be bigger than a smaller number cubed. Let me just repeat that and write it out at the same time. So if I know, and we've specified this in the problem, if b is greater than a, I know that any number cubed will always be bigger than a small number cubed. And we could just take any example of this. Let's say if we have two versus one. If we cube two and we cube one, we know that eight is greater than one. So you can do this with any two pairs of values, regardless of if it's positive, if it's negative, or if it's zero, this will always be the case. So we always know that if B is greater than A, or if one number is bigger than another, then that number cubed is bigger than the smaller number cubed. Now, this is something that's hard to kind of know just in the moment, but it's worth thinking about that you need to just compare the equivalent expressions and say, okay, if I know that f of b is greater than f of a, then it's probably right that b cubed is gonna be bigger than a cubed when b is greater than a. Now, if you want a counter example to this, just to show that this is not always the case, if you had x squared plus one quarter x, this actually wouldn't work. And the reason for that is because when you square negative numbers, they actually become positive. So you can have a smaller number because it's negative or it's more to the left on the, the number spectrum, but when you square it, the negative is removed and it becomes positive and therefore the magnitude of the number is actually greater. So 
this is not really hocus pocus. This actually works for specific cases. And I know it's gonna work in this case because I know the graph is strictly increasing. So I kind of have that knowledge in my back of my mind that I know this is gonna work. Therefore, I'm going to complete this process as I see fit. Now, I can do exactly the same thing for one quarter A and one quarter B. I can compare those two numbers or those two expressions, and I can say also that when B is greater than A, I know by multiplying that number by one quarter, that's just gonna scale my number down, and that's still gonna be bigger than one quarter A. So I know that B cubed is greater than A cubed, and also one quarter B is greater than one quarter A. And obviously, if I add this with this, and I compare it with the addition of this and this, if the components are bigger, if both the components are bigger, therefore the combination of them will also be bigger as well. So I can say, therefore, b cubed plus one quarter b is definitely bigger than a cubed plus one quarter a. And you can see here, this is not a coincidence. I'm trying to say that f of b is greater than f of a. So I've kind of shown this expression here, therefore I've got to my last line, which is f of b is greater than f of a when b is greater than a, and I've shown this question is correct, therefore this is done.